Welcome back to Brick System Brothers. Today I want to talk about one of my old city mocks, uh, one of the buildings that I had constructed when I was planning my city layout. And this goes all the way back to one of my first city layouts where it was actually on my floor. Um, so we're going to go look at kind of some timeline pictures that I've found, um, the different iterations of this building over the years. This is actually the fourth iteration of what came to be known as the red department store um, and each iteration was characterized by three floors um, the red color and this green base brick was used for the floor so I had these guys uh, these are kind of an older piece um, and they come in various sizes then there's also regular uh, green bricks so this is the same thickness as a brick but since it's so large, you can span greater distances with it and you only need to support the edges. So this is what I use to build a lot of the floor structure um, in this building for all four iterations. Every generation of this building had this as the floor. Um, when I built the first couple forms of the building, I only had green ones, so the floor became this green color. Even when I got other colors of this base brick, and I could have changed the color at that point, it was so iconic, uh, I left it as the green color and uh, made it work for the building. So, uh, just a couple other main details, and then we'll go look at some pictures. This is actually a corner structure in its current form, but it hasn't always been a corner structure. Uh, but the current one, as a corner structure, is actually wider than the 32. You can see the edge of the 32 base plate right here. So that goes from this corner up to this and then it does extend past so your road intersection uh, would kind of come in the front here and then follow this around to this side um, and the way this is set up um, when I had it in my city layout this base plate was set back two more studs and so the next section right here in front of the road was 16 studs wide and you could put in one of those half modulars or a, a half structure to fill out the rest of that road plate. So that was kind of the sizing for this version of it to be the corner structure. It is of course minifig scale um, and the top floor in this iteration is mostly open with access to um, this structure on the left side but we're going to come back and look at specific details of this building after um, the pictures from the good old days. So let's go look back at what this used to look like. Story of my red department building goes back to 2008. Um, at least 2008 is the first picture, good picture I have of this in my city. And it definitely has the characteristics, but doesn't look a whole lot like the current version of the building. Um, so I won't say a whole lot about the rest of the city. Um, throughout all these pictures actually I just want to focus on the building but um, at this time I had enough one by red bricks to build three stories high and I remember in my let's see how old was I like 11 or 12 year old brain when I started this I was just gonna keep adding floors and bricks um, and try to find more of these pieces so that I could have this monstrous building all the way up to the ceiling that didn't happen it kind of peaked out at three floors and most of the time it probably didn't even have a roof if it did it was just a 16 by 32 base plate um, set on the top row of studs without being fastened down um, so really almost more of a primitive structure um, but in those days i was just starting on a city layout before that i had mostly focused on vehicles um, i had a train set way before that but i didn't do much with the layout until 2007-2008. So this was pretty early on in my city building days. Um, it did have three doors at the bottom to get in, a small portico, little porch roof, these two by three red slopes barely visible blending in, um, and then a couple of attachments on the left side, a train stoplight and a flag maybe advertising what was for sale inside, and a very rudimentary balcony um, with a non-OSHA approved railing up on the top. So that's the outside of the structure right next to the railroad tracks so uh, rent prices probably plummeting after the main line went through 
And then I do have a picture of the inside from these days as well. Um, pretty close to the same, probably on the same day I took this picture with uh, a view at the back. Now what's interesting about the back is it is an open back structure so you can you know reach in put minifigs in that kind of thing um, but it looks like I actually tie this into the structure of the building putting up railings on the back um, to the point where you know the minifigs also knew it was an open back structure and uh, the railing was there for their safety uh, unfortunately, there was no railing on the staircase going up to the top floor. Uh, it's definitely a safety hazard. You're going to fall right on this rack of tools. Um, and as far as furnishings go, there wasn't a whole lot. Uh, our construction team captain was driving his uh, digger around in the top floor, not doing a whole lot to be helpful. Um, I do remember putting a whole bunch of construction team workers up on this ridge like they were going to keep going, but they never did. And in the bottom floor, maybe a little more furniture. I think these were my uh, my version of a Lego TV television set. It was just a stack of 2x4s. On the other side, there would be a 1x2 brick representing the television screen. So the whole entertainment cabinet was kind of all built in together with the TV. And that's what I was selling out of this department store in 2008 for those minifigs. A uh, population of three buildings over here and whoever was living in this contraption. Fast forward to 2009 <clears throat> is not too much later, but by this point I was up on a plywood um, actual elevated table in my room and had more of an idea of a city layout with more roads, more buildings. I had Market Street at this point and uh, was other, other mocks and other buildings. So kind of filling in those gaps and the red department store is no longer um, the main structure of the entire city. It is definitely more of a row building now and it's changed form a little bit. The three floors are still here. Um, we've added a few more windows that are a bit larger. So these two by four by three windows uh, definitely suit the building better than those vintage ones. I had managed to find some large um, blue glass windows for the main floor, kind of a showroom floor. The Ferrari flag is still there outside of the front. And I think this is also a little alleyway um, going through on the left side of the building. So the top floor, this time stocked with appliances and furniture. And uh, up on the roof, there's actually a prize winner four-wheeler buggy with the trophy. Um, I don't know if that's a statue advertisement or if this guy is paid minimum wage to stand up there all day. Uh, a couple more balconies have been added. Uh, no front railings though, so um, I think in the summers they flooded the street and this was a diving board, something like that. And this was yeah situated kind of on, on this row of other buildings and mocks now. Definitely more of a proper city. I also have a partial photo of the interior from this building, very blurry, very open, but we can see the brick built staircase has been replaced with a single element, um, this brown staircase element. In the very bottom floor, I think was definitely the most furnished. Unfortunately, that is what is cut off in this picture, uh, but we do have enough to see the security camera system uh, monitoring the shoppers. The top floor was empty. There was also a ladder in this picture to get up to the top floor that wasn't there in uh, the previous one. So Blue Man Group performing over here could actually go up to the top floor and uh, sing to the entire city in 2009. All right. Um, 2011 was much closer to the current iteration of the building, but still uh, very blocky, very rectangular in shape. Um, there wasn't a lot of interest in the front, just simple windows. Uh, the only the only thing that's different is this little bump out for the telephone booth, which is actually built into the building. I was really happy um, to kind of structure this in the way that I did. Instead of pushing it all the way out and taking up the entire sidewalk, um, I just carved out a little 4x4 corner of this building for a built-in telephone booth in the city um, and made that part of the red department store. 
Um, much more departmentalized now with three distinct stores. I had Flo's Furniture, Ninja Sporting Goods, and the Shirt Shack Dresswear. Um, Ninja Sporting Goods was using the 2012 Cole minifig as part of their um, advertising board. So I did have this one Ninjago set from the year like 2011-2012 Wave 1, um, but never really pursuing that theme anymore. I did just kind of incorporate him into the city at this point. So we've got our red train door now. Um, and then these, the same window structure has been transferred over to this current building um, and is in use here. And this window style did carry on into the fourth generation. Uh, still the flat front, green plate roof. Um, the inside was broken up into those three stores. So this was one, two, three. And I think we had one, three, two in this arrangement. So Flo's furniture was furniture, and this picture is pretty blurry. Um, but these are recliners. This is a grill, a stove over here, a little computer setup, desk. And then we've gone back to the brick-built stairs, but this time it is meant to be an escalator build. So you take the escalator up. Um, the second floor doesn't go all the way across. Now we have this big open space for a hanging display like you would see in like a Bass Pro Shop or something. And that prize-winning orange four-wheeler is back. Now it is under a roof. Um, we have some pairs of pants up here. The price says either two or three dollars each. So you can get these bargain pants um, just slapped on a plate and thrown in there. You take the escalator up one more floor and you get to, um, I think this was the Ninja store. Uh, we've got some motorcycle racing outfits and a drum kit from the Blue Man group that left town uh, with no prospects. So recycling builds and, and projects into um, the next iteration of this building. You can also see my support structure for the roof was these green plates on the underside of the large green base bricks. Um, but those three departments, those three floors still there. We go a little bit further forward. The arrangement of the stores has changed. Um, the Ninja minifig is gone, but the rest is still the same pretty much. Uh, the one thing that was different was by this time I had the actual Lego telephone piece. Um, before this I had to settle for a m mod telephone. It was like a bar and two one by one clips. We'll go back to see my old telephone, oldie style. So that was in there. That was the placeholder until I got the actual telephone piece. And that's really the only difference in this picture. I think this is the 2013 one. Um, so rearranging fours a little bit, but still occupying this same red structure. And now current setup, or uh, this was the current setup until I took down the city. I think I built the structure in 2016, um, either 2015, 2016, somewhere right in there. And this is the same basic building that I have today. Um, in this picture, it's actually missing a few pieces. It was in a state of disrepair in the last days of my LEGO City, but um, this is kind of where it hung out the entire five years I had this city up. So right at this corner, uh, running parallel to the railroad track, and then it makes this turn going back to um, the Owl Apartments, which is a derivative of my original Market Street, and um, talked about actually going back from this build to Market Street in a different video. Um, the slightly modified cinema from the 2010 set just widen had to widen it by two bricks to get it to fit in on the 32 stud base plate. So then opposite that is this corner where my red department store is located. Um, the only corner modular I had was the bank. So the bank could have gone here, it probably would have looked better. Um, but it also worked over here, and the red department store, I don't know if I ever tried it over here on this other corner, just because of the way that the road layout works, and the other side of this is a half, um, that would have left a gap right here that the bank didn't, so this is just how it was arranged, and this is where it stayed until today. I have separated it from the rest of the city. Um, the city's kind of all been dismantled, but I still have individual buildings and wanted to look a little closer 
at the red department store. So to set this iteration of the department store um, apart from the other three, I wanted to add a lot more in terms of interest to the structural side of the building. So the first way I did that was bumping out this entire corner section by three studs. Um, and that carried through to the green roof layer, which is always one stud out from the red wall. Um, the same window structure is in place here, but it's spaced a little bit more evenly throughout. Um, there's actually 13 red windows throughout the build. So there's three in the second floor, three right here. Um, this one would have a window, but it's still got the telephone booth um, in that corner. And then I put another three in the bump out, one next to the door, and then a set of four against um, the straight facade of the remainder going that way. So 13 windows, and then the top has a some, something of a balcony, not so much of a window up there. There is uh, also a variation introduced with this little build see if I can bring this in focus. This is just two headlight bricks and a one by two tile um, to build a somewhat different brick structure, um, which does help a lot with the variation of just a blank red wall. So we're breaking it up with these large two by four by three windows and also a smattering of these um, special bricks or more bricky bricks. The back is still open, open back structure, um, but it is much deeper than the other uh, versions of this building just because of the way that this swings around the corner and comes back towards the street um, on this side. So that has allowed much greater floor space. Um, unfortunately, I don't remember really utilizing this building a whole lot um, in the department store kind of side of things. Uh, when it was in this configuration, it was more just a, a visual placeholder building. Um, back, back with the other three iterations was when my siblings and I would really have our um, minifig role-playing days and we just played in the city a lot more than we did when I was older and built this structure. And I went to college, so I wasn't there. I did reinstate a few of the vintage style windows um, on the inside corner back here, but the main attraction um, for this separate tower is actually a working elevator, um, working in the sense that you move it by hand. Um, when I was first building this, I thought of trying to hook up some kind of 9 volt train rail elevator system, um, but it was taking up this much room instead of this much room, and so I just went to the simple um, hand-powered method. So there is an elevator here, that gets to all three floors. Um, it's a little bit stiff up going up in the bricks, um, but it's one of those things that I built into the structure and just kind of sets it apart again from other buildings. When it gets to this top floor, you do have to open another door um, to get out on the balcony. So that's kind of a pointless floor <laughs> to get out on. Uh, on the balcony here, I mean, if you want to look out over the city this way, you can do that. But for the most part, the elevator takes you up to um, this balcony. And this is where you can have your rooftop city parties and um, uh, all that kind of fun stuff. So that's the elevator going to the top floor really only needs to get um, to this side. And this is just more visual interest again. And the other point of interest is the entrance kind of corner build here. Um, so this is still using that red train door, but now it is set at 45 degrees, um, built up into the bottom of our large green base brick. So that's what this piece is right here. Um, and then there's a little bit of structural detail to help hold this door in place at that 45 degrees. Um, and then to complete the structural side, Oops. I used these little pillars and brought those down to continue the line uh, off of the corner all the way down to um, the sidewalk surface. So, I'll give you guys a look at the telephone booth. 
now that that door has fallen off. Yep, pretty simple. Just a little 3x4 area with a telephone on a clip and a little dial pad. For the minifigs of my city to use, free of charge, of course. So that's the red department store. And uh, I don't know if this has a home in my next city. It might have to get um, rebuilt again into a fifth iteration, or it might just have to stop here. Uh, I've started to realize that the green-red combo looks kind of tacky for a building, so I would like to move towards that realism, uh, like what we saw in my train station, um, brick, Brickwell Station. has a little more of that realism, just looking at color choices and combinations there. Um, and it never hurts to add in a little more color variety with your window uh, trim and different structures there. So this might... Um, this might get updated to the point where it is no longer the same uh, in terms of an iteration of the red department store. Um, the fourth iteration here might be all the further that it goes. And that's fine. Uh, it's lived a good long life ever since that 2008 debut um, with the non-OSHA approved balcony over the railroad tracks. I have a couple more mocks, um, a couple more that are modifications of a uh, official set, um, but these will all be eventually covered here on Brick System Brothers. So I'd like to do the same thing with my pictures from um, just the past 10 years or so, looking at how this has changed over the years and um, then taking a close look with the physical structure I still have today, um, just having these built up still from my city, even though the city's been dismantled. Alright, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Brick System Brothers.